Peter Gumsch and his team investigate cracks, crumpling, abrasion, and fracture. Such experiments form the basis of their research, allowing them to predict the behavior of certain materials under stress. This branch of science has always fascinated the Hector Fellow, even at a very young age. Trying to understand how and why something breaks or crumbles is a basic question already explored by little kids playing in a sandbox. It's fascinating and helps to get an idea of the material's properties. I think I still have some of that childlike enthusiasm which makes me want to comprehend why some things break and others don't. This childlike curiosity eventually led to the founding of one of the foremost centers for research on the mechanics of materials. Studying friction on a molecular scale is one of the goals pursued by Peter Gumsch and his colleagues. Their Center for Microtribology is part of the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, KIT. Good, super. Das ist die Kupferprobe. To ensure that the results really are a function of the material's properties, it is essential that the samples are of extremely high purity. This sample is a small piece of copper, along which slides a ball made of sapphire, rubbing along under carefully controlled conditions. While this experiment may not look all that exciting, it gives the researchers groundbreaking insights into the characteristics of materials and how they behave under friction. This experiment, rolling a sapphire ball across a highly polished copper surface, is modeling under ideal circumstances, repeatable under varying conditions. We can subject the surface to varying degrees of friction and analyze what happens to the material below. The big question is, what happens beneath the surface? Under the microscope, the researchers hope to find clues that will one day allow them to fully comprehend the mechanisms of friction and eventually even predict them. Wow, great. So let's the processes that underhalb der Oberfläche The processes below the surface are not yet understood, but they do play a very big role in the friction and wear of materials. Therefore, we need to come up with tools that simulate these processes and allow us to describe them. We are talking about layers that are only nanometers in thickness. Here, mechanical forces are at work at the level of atoms. Our big challenge is to connect these molecular scale processes to macroscopic experiments. A closer look at cars shows how important the mechanics of materials are to our everyday lives. Reliable tires depend on friction, and car manufacturers are always on the lookout for lighter materials at lower cost and higher energy efficiency while maintaining high performance standards. We entrust our lives to the materials that make up a car. So it is of vital importance to us that they fulfill their function as expected, today and tomorrow. Just think about autonomous driving. You can't assume that in the future a driver will still sit behind the steering wheel and watch the road. Therefore, protecting the passengers inside the car will become much more complex. We have to consider human beings in all kinds of places and positions inside the car a subject that is sure to keep us busy for years to come. Much technological research revolves around people. Our safety depends upon the mechanics of materials, on friction, wear and tear, and breakage. Here at the Fraunhofer Institute for Mechanics of Materials in Freiburg, another team led by Peter Gumsch specializes in investigating the breaking and tearing of materials, a big responsibility. 
Their calculations and simulations regarding the behavior and safety of materials are put to the test in the streets a million times every day. A crash test, such as this one, is a quality control experiment that can save lives. These test specimens are essential when it comes to analyzing the exact processes by which the laws of physics affect certain materials. When two vehicles crash, we want to mitigate a situation in which two objects collide at high speed and mechanical processes are speed dependent. We may have one material that absorbs less energy at higher velocities compared to what we measured at lower speeds, while another material behaves much more favorably and would provide better protection even at high speeds. We want to make sure that the materials used really do the job. What exactly happens when a material fractures? This is the question Salika Morni tries to answer for the Hector Fellow Academy. Her study subjects are minute specimens of various materials. She's looking at the behavior of compound materials under stress. Based upon these observations and analyses, she hopes to deduce principles of tearing that can be applied to a general model of how materials behave. The experiment may look small, but the scientific challenge is enormous. The challenge start from the very beginning when you started to prepare the sample for the experiment. The experiment itself, because it's uh, really tricky to handle very small specimens, and then extracting all the information from the experiment, um, gather all the important information as well as the parameters, and incorporate all of these elements into a model, and later on uh, come out with a very reliable model and simulate the large structure that made out of this material. The real work for Salika Morni and Hector fellow Peter Gumpsch starts well after the material has been torn. Now they incorporate the sample's actual reaction into a complex computer model which is designed to behave like the original. By extrapolating from a small sample, the researchers aim to predict the behavior of a given material in general and under varying conditions of stress. The small sample assessment Salika does is new ground for us. Up until recently, we did not have the capabilities to experiment with complex materials at such a high resolution and in so much detail. There is more to it than meets the eye. Only with this high-tech camera Will the scientists be able to see what actually happens to the material? In this experiment, they investigate how the material behaves when it is crushed, a scenario typical for a car accident. The result is obvious, but not the process. The camera's super slow motion images reveal the complex interaction between various physical effects. This would have remained invisible to the human eye without special recording technology. Thermally sensitive cameras, for example, show changes in temperature inside the material during the experiment, an important factor when it comes to developing modern high-tech materials. We hope that our efforts can provide engineers with more information on the properties of materials, including when and how they might fail. This could help in the early phases of construction, because deconstruction, wear and tear, can be taken into account right from the start. Destruction that leads to highly constructive ideas, a guiding theme 
in the search for the most suitable materials in our increasingly technological world.